In this video, I'm going to show you a few ideas to manage your long scroll projects in Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring software Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with all of your e-learning friends. I saw a message on the Adobe e-learning community about long scroll slides, timeline, animations, trigger, and, and various other things. The, the original poster wrote, long-term Captivate user, but first time using the new Captivate software. Basically, I want to use long scroll pages for slides, but not sure how to set the lower sections on the page to load when they become active in the viewport. Is there a way to add pauses onto the page and trigger sections from appearing once they've scrolled down or clicked on a button? So I have a solution to this. I haven't really implemented it in an actual e-learning course, but when I was helping to develop the Adobe Captivate certification, I definitely wanted to include this information. And there's a lot of things you can do to improve on the long scrolling uh, projects that you can do in Captivate. And this video, we're gonna address one of those right now. Here's a project file that I started to work on here, and it contains the first few slides from the storytelling quick start project, which you can find in your Adobe Captivate Assets Library. So I copied and pasted the blocks necessary to reproduce the equivalent of about three slides here. Now, unfortunately, I can't do the new AI voices in just a block. That would be a good suggestion for Adobe to consider, but I sort of understand why it's not done. So I created a couple of blank slides here at the end, and I went into the audio section, and of course, using the closed captions window, added the audio that I thought was appropriate for each of these sections. And then once I did that, of course, I was able to expand my timeline and export these three files from these three slides so that I can use them on a single long scroll project. Let me show you my plan here. So the first thing I did was set up these three sections. At the end of each section, I either have a start, a continue button, and presumably there would be another continue button if I continued this process of repeating, adding the blocks in one by one. So on the slide enter, I'd like to play and display this first block here. So I'm gonna to go to my interactions icon in my right hand toolbar, and we're gonna click on the plus icon next to slide interactions, and we're gonna choose slide enter. So when we arrive on the slide, the first thing I want to do is I wanna play the first audio clip. Let's click on the more icon, and first of all, just in case there's a reason to stop any existing media from playing, I'm going to use the stop media action. Click done. And now I'm going to add a new action. And we're going to click more. And we're going to play media. And then I'm simply going to browse to my desktop where I happen to have these audio clips uh, set up here. So text to audio one. .mp3. I'm going to select that, click on open. And now when I arrive on the slide, you'll see, of course, this first block and you'll hear the audio that goes with it. Just hit done here. Now, the next thing is, is what happens when I want to hear the audio for this next block? Well, I'm going to use the start button for that. And we're going to do a few actions to make sure that it's seamless. So first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take care of the audio. So I'm gonna click on more. I'm also going to stop media, press done, and I'm gonna add a new action, click more, and play media, 
and we'll browse to our second audio clip, and that's text to audio 2, and I'll just click on open there. Click done. But we're not finished yet. The next thing we want to do is we want to display these two blocks, or these three blocks rather, that make up the next block of content, if you will. So first thing I want to do is select each of the blocks, not the objects within the blocks, not the components, but the entire block itself. Then I'm going to click on the Hide During Publish icon, which you'll find in your Properties Inspector, so that when we first arrive on these slides, these blocks will not be visible. And while I'm at it, I might as well do this bottom block as well. So I'm just going to click on that and Hide During Publish there. So back to our Start button here, let's continue to add some more actions. So we're going to add a new action, and we're going to show the individual content sections, not the objects, but the content sections for the next piece of content here. So this is the first one. That's the input field. The next one is the radio buttons. And then, of course, this item here, which includes our button that will continue from there. So we'll show that stuff, press Next, and press Done. Okay, so that takes care of the actions for our start. Now let's go and press the Continue button, or click on the Continue button, and uh, we'll set up some actions for that as well. So in this case here, we're going to stop any audio that's already playing, select the next action, and we'll play media, browse to our third and final audio. And of course, you can repeat this for as long as you want this long scroll project to function for. We'll click on Open, and then click on Done. And now we'll simply show our final block in the content section area here. Press Next and press Done. So now let's preview this from the start here and see how this works. Observe a party, classroom, or social engagement. Good storytellers are attention stealers. Let's find out why storytelling is an art and also a skill. Select Start to begin. Okay, so the only thing missing, and if you guys agree with me, by all means, in Adobe Captivate, click on the Help drop-down menu and provide feedback accordingly. I think one of the things that would be really great is to have an action that scrolls down a page's worth of material, whatever that might be. Uh, we'll leave that up to Adobe to figure out when I press Start and open up and display those additional content sections and play the audio. But here's how it works right now. Please type in your name in the field on your slide, then answer the question. Press Continue to proceed. So again, the only thing missing really is the fact that it doesn't scroll down for you. There is a bit of a visual cue in that your scroll bar will suddenly grow in length. Um, but, you know, it's not as foolproof. But at least I can get some audio in here and make some choices and press continue. Section 1, Introduction to Storytelling. Welcome, let's explore this section. So there you go. And I'm, I mean, just sort of repeat this process with a series of continue buttons that expand the page and make it longer. And again, if you feel, as I do, that I think there needs to be one other action that Adobe could actually add to our actions list that allows us to scroll down the page to the next block of content at the very least. But, you know, for right now, this certainly achieves what I needed to achieve. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.